Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. If you like this episode, please remember to hit the like button and leave a comment or two. Then subscribe and click on the bell to receive notifications of whenever we release new videos. Also, please remember to share them to your social media. Welcome back to Scary Bear Attacks. Today's episode takes us to the interior of northern British Columbia, Canada, near a small town called Gitanyo. The mountains tower above a mile high at their peaks, and the valleys between them are broad and heavily forested. In most of these broad valleys, tangles of willow, alder, and tall grasses screen elk, deer, moose, and woodland caribou. You may even see American bison browsing on grasses munching their way across meadows. Predators include cougars, wolves, coyotes, and black and brown bears stalk the riparian zones to surprise their prey. It is in this setting that our episode takes place today. On June 26th of 2019, 54-year-old Alex Woods was walking alone near Gixon Village, just a few miles from his village, Gitanyo. He was a forest pathologist and was going to check tree roots for a disease known as armillaria root disease in old-growth stands of forest. Alex was a lean-built man who wore his silver beard trimmed short. He had the GPS coordinates all entered into his device, but was an old-school type of guy, so he took a heading and hiked in the general direction. He had spent the last few decades in the deep woods and routinely hunted and floated the rivers. As he walked through the foliage, he noticed a freshly broken stem of a fireweed plant. Knowing this doesn't happen unless a large animal has passed by, he took mental note to pay attention to his surroundings. He began yelling, Yo, bear, repeatedly to let anything that was around him know he was there. He didn't want to end up in a close-range standoff with a moose, let alone a surprised bear. A few hundred yards into his journey, Alex came up on a steep slope covered in hemlock and balsam fir, burned from a wildfire a year or two before, and was open consequently. The small creek at the bottom refreshed plants and animals alike along its banks. Given the noise from the creek, Alex decided to raise his voice while yelling Yo Bear as he descended the bank. Just beyond halfway down the slope, he saw some morel mushrooms and plucked a couple for his dinner later. After he picked up the mushrooms and stood, he noticed a black bear running directly at him. It wasn't grunting or growling. The bear didn't have any drool dripping from its lips. It simply sped toward him as if it were going to run straight past him. It closed from about 100 feet when he first saw it and quickly climbed the steep slope toward him so fast Alex wasn't sure what he could do. Alex quickly maneuvered himself behind a small tree with a tree laying at its trunk and began yelling at the bear. He reached his hand into his vest and pulled out his bear spray, figuring that one blast from it would probably send the bear scampering in the other direction. The cap on the bear spray was stuck, and he fumbled with it, trying to get it to function as the bear approached him. The next thing Alex knew, he saw a huge bear head with its mouth wide open and ready to bite into his abdomen. One thing Alex had working for him was the steep slope he was climbing down. As the bear labored up the slope, its head happened to line up for a perfect defensive strike from Alex. He yelled again, then mustered his bravery and kicked the bear as hard as he could right in the jaw. Between Alex's kick and the steepness of the slope, the bear slid back down the slope several feet. It then began to run around the tree to get at him. As the bear approached him again, Alex yelled louder and kicked it in the head as hard as he could one more time. This really rattled the bear, as it ran to a nearby tree and climbed several feet up and stared at Alex. The man was hoping that this encounter was coming to an end after the brief struggle, but in the world of bears, struggle is always a part of survival. Whenever Alex went into the woods, he carried his father's hatchet strapped into a pocket of his work vest, right near his bear spray. He had always felt it was a good tool to have handy in a pinch, and he was absolutely right this day. After a short staring session, the bear slowly clawed its way back down the tree. As it did so, Alex reached into the pouch on the back of his work vest and pulled out his father's hatchet. He was hoping the bear would take this moment to run away, but the bear quickly dashed toward him, again to attack with more vigor this time. Alex swung the hatchet with grim intention and sank its sharpened bit deeply into the bear's head. The bear immediately slumped over and rolled down the slope. It laid on its back, but was still breathing. Alex knew better than to believe his eyes when it came to bears, as they are known for quickly regaining their feet and killing people. He was protected, standing behind the tree in a deadfall, and didn't want to give that spot up without certainty. After several minutes of observing the bear, he decided to scramble back up the slope and put as much distance between him and the bear as he could. Alex kept his eyes on the bear as he backed up the slope, then headed directly to his truck. He was still very frightened and continually checked over his shoulder every few steps as he went. 
Visions of the bear rolling over and regaining its feet drove him to quicken his pace until he entered the cab of his truck. Once Alex returned to town, he called up the British Columbia Conservation Officer Service and relayed the unbelievable story to them. Investigators headed up to the location and found the bear was still alive, but just barely. The bear was immobilized by the hatchet blow as its skull was opened up. As a humane gesture, the officers put the bear down and ended its headache better than aspirin. The officers returned to town and let Alex know that the bear had cubs, and that may be why she was so defensive. He was still torn up by the information, as he would have never wanted to orphan bear cubs. He rehearsed in his mind how he had done everything that had worked for 35 years in the woods. He yelled and made plenty of noise to make sure the bear would know he was there, but maybe the creek covered up his attempts to be bear aware. Several experts indicated that the sow was demonstrating predatory behavior in her attack of Alex. He was lucky that day. The officers examined the sow and found her to be healthy and even on the larger side for bears in the area, weighing in at just under 200 pounds. Alex noted that streams were lower this year than previous years and that that may be an indicator of ecological distress in the area. As a warning to other people who visit the woods, Alex says, You have to make sure to keep your bear spray handy. It won't do you any good if you don't know how to use it or can't quickly access it. He laments that if he'd been able to use his bear spray, perhaps this sow and her cubs would still be alive. Alex says that when he goes into the woods from now on, he will change his approach. He's used to hunting by himself, but isn't so sure anymore. He's concerned that the intensity and danger of this confrontation will stay with him for quite a while. After reviewing the details of this episode, I have a few questions for you. Do you think that the bear was trying to prey on Alex, or did she have other motives? Why weren't her cubs anywhere near her during the attack? Do you think Alex's attempt to alert nearby animals instigated the attack? I wonder what the officers did with her cubs after putting her out of her misery. I enjoy reading your comments, so please post them below and let's talk about it. Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. If you've enjoyed this episode, please consider clicking on the like button and clicking on the bell icon. We'll help you know when we post our new episodes. Posting our video links to your social media profiles furthers awareness, and it's fun. We slashed our prices in our merch store, linked below. So check out the bargains there while you shop. As a member of our human community, remember to adventure bravely and be careful out there, especially in bear country.